Hello friends, this is the lesson number 13 in this series of literary criticism in English literature. So first starting this lesson, before starting this lesson, I would like to feel sorry that it's been a while, in fact more than a month that I last posted a lesson on YouTube. I was busy uh, with several functions, so that is why I could not afford the time. Anyhow, in this lesson we shall be discussing Philip Sidney as a literary critic. Uh, so first, uh, if you remember that last time in the literary criticism we discussed Quintilian and uh, his lifespan was in the first century. And when we talk about uh, Philip Sidney, his lifespan goes uh, in the 16th century. So there is a huge difference of almost 14 or 15 centuries between their lifespans. So it means that uh, during this period there were not too many critics. Quite right so, because there were not too many good names or big names to be uh, recognized as a good critic. So with Philip Sidney now we are starting and uh, you know that uh, Philip Sidney was called as a perfect renaissance man. About his life and other works, we shall be discussing all these things in the uh, British literature. And in this segment, we shall be discussing only uh, his uh, works related to criticism in English literature. So, uh, his birth was uh, in 1554 and he died at pretty young age in 1586. So, almost 32 years he lived. And uh, you know that at that time means in Elizabethan age, it was the period of Renaissance. So everyone was just writing. So everyone was just becoming a poet. So not to pay, not too many people know that what is good poetry, how to write good poetry, what should be the content. So that is why the criticism was needed. And uh, Philip Sidney realized this uh, scope that one should write how to write good poetic or uh, good poetry or good poetic work so uh, first uh, a few of the points i would like to discuss uh, about the background of this age uh, you know that uh, during this age the discovery of the ancient works like the works of aristotle plato and others these works were discovered and when the people uh, went through these works, then their such works raised some good questions like what is the uh, good form of poetry? Is poetry good or bad? Because you know that Plato, uh, the famous uh, critic or philosopher, he gave the opinion that poetry uh, is not a good thing or he condemned the poetry. And uh, he was... Uh, Okay, there was a view that he was saying that poetry is behind all sorts of uh, corruptions and uh, the moral downfall of the people. And uh, all these classical works, when people went through, they started reading. Then really it inspires them to uh, write poetry. And uh, one more thing, at that time in the uh, period of 1550 to 1600, there was one new class that was of the uh, Puritans. What were the beliefs of the Puritans? The Puritans simply the people, uh, okay, they followed, uh, there, are, there were the two branches of the Christianity. We know that uh, uh, Protestants and the Catholics. And uh, for Protestants, uh, sorry, for Puritans, we can say that uh, they were the Protestants. And they were the strict Protestants, means they were following the rules for the purity of their soul very strictly. They hated every type of art, work and poetry. They were condemning poetry, any sort of celebrations, uh, alcohol, everything they were just uh, condemning. So Puritans were at that time flourishing as well. So they were also uh, criticizing the poetry that uh, poetry is uh, corrupting the people. So this, these were the backgrounds uh, of the age when Philip Sidney was there to write uh, or give his views about the criticism in poetry. Uh, first, we have to uh, discuss one name that is Stephen Gosson. 
Stephen Goson was a Puritan. I discussed that such people or Puritan people they hated poetry. Uh, Stephen Goson wrote a work in 1578. It was a pamphlet. Pamphlet is a uh, four or five pages long work. And in that work, uh, okay, what was the title? The title was The School of Abuse. Uh, in that work, he is simply criticizing poetry. And uh, somewhere he dedicated this work to Sydney. It was a uh, means a dedication, such a dedication was uh, that uh, he was somewhere uh, condemning whatever Sydney was writing in poetry. So he was making somewhat fun of uh, Philip Sydney. And what he said in this work, uh, Stephen Gosson, he was saying that poetry is to be uh, eliminated from the society. He, why he says this? Because he feels that poetry is purely the wastage of time. Whoever writes uh, poetry or these artworks, uh, he is simply wasting his time. It is the mother of lies. Whatever is said in the poetry is not real. It is a, almost a false world or it is just imagination. So it is lie, what he says. Another thing he says that nurse of abuse. So with poetry, the people uh, abuse one another. If someone is writing poetry, he is uh, abusing uh, other people and uh, this thing happen in the society. So it is uh, helping people to uh, abuse others. So this is uh, one charge he making he is making against poetry after this he also says that uh, plato the famous uh, philosopher has rightly banished poets from his ideal world we know that plato in his uh, uh, critical views has said that poetry is thrice removed from reality and uh, he advocated that uh, uh, the poets should be removed from the ideal world which he imagines that uh, if a good world is there or good society is there in that society poetry or poet should not be there these were the views given by stephen goson in the work school of abuse and now i just gave a little introduction to this work because in response to this work philip sydney wrote a famous work and the famous work is defense of poesy defense of poesy it is supposed to be published in 1595 after his death so posthumously it was published and it is also called as apology for poetry defense of poesy or apology for poetry written by philip sydney in this work he starts formally uh, first he talks about criticism in literature and uh, Sorry for the interruption. Uh, what uh, I was saying, uh, defense of poesy. Yeah. Uh, in his response, what he says uh, to Stephen Goson first, that poetry is speaking picture. Philip Sidney says that poetry is a speaking picture, like any artist. If there is a painter, he is drawing a picture, but that picture does not speak. But when a poet writes a poem, it is like a speaking picture because it, okay, so if uh, someone has to read the poem, he will definitely speak. And further, it creates a, a picture in the mind of the listener. So that is why he says that it is a speaking picture. And what is the aim of the poetry? The main aim of the poetry is to teach and to delight. So to teach moral things, moral values, and also to produce delight, happiness in human mind. Now he starts praising poetry. So we are talking about Philip Sidney. He is praising poetry. What he says that uh, first poetry precedes all branches of learning. Whichever thing we are learning, he just takes one example that uh, a child learns learns the things in the childhood and he starts learning things through rhymes and rhythms in the songs and all those things because human mind is pretty much receptive uh, to such music and rhythms 
and uh, one can easily learn these things so that is why he says that poetry precedes all branches of learning so it helps in learning so many things you can easily remember a song but to remember a prose exactly line by line is so difficult and further he says that uh, uh, poetry came first than prose we have two branches of uh, the literary text one is prose and other is poetry and now you can uh, go back into the history of the literature uh, we see that in ancient time there were no prose work it was only sorry yes poetry came first and then came prose uh, we look at one work that was so which is also called as uh, the first epic work that is beowulf Beowulf was a uh, in poetic form. It was a poetry, not prose. So Philip Sidney says that the poetry was the first, or you can say, okay, one more example you can take that even in the folklores or even in the ancient comedies and dramas, whatever you see, it was all in the form of the poetry. It was narrated with the rhyme and music and rhythm. Everything was there, but there was no prose at all in the history. It, it started only uh, when we come to the 10th or 11th century only then otherwise it was only poetry before that so that is why he says that it is ages since ages we see poetry flourishing and uh, during all ages uh, whether it was uh, in the first century or even in the 10th century 15th century everywhere we see that poetry is flourishing age by age and one more example he takes that even the uncivilized tribes like uh, Tusk and Tartars. So one name he takes, uh, Philip Sidney takes, uh, that is Tusk and Tartars. They also loved poetry. These tribes were called as uh, uh, uncivilized ones. Okay, I don't know much about these tribes. But he has taken this name and he says that even such uncivilized tribes were also enjoying poetry. And they loved poetry and because they feel that it helps them to soften their hearts and uh, he also says that poetry is universal in every corner of the world you see poetry is there in every country in every literature there is poetry because poetry is the basic form of any kind of literature so that is why he gives so much respect to poetry and uh, even he says that uh, the Greeks, Romans, uh, even in the uh, Psalms, Psalms in Bible, all are created by poets. So in every religion, we find that poetry is there. So that is why he feels that because of all these qualities, its universality, its uh, means uh, uh, because it is the branch of all, it proceeds in the branch of all learnings and uh, everywhere he finds that poetry is there. So that is why he favors poetry. And now one more point he makes that is uh, poetry is superior. He makes uh, some comparison uh, and he says that poetry is superior to history and philosophy. Now, history we all know that it is all about facts and figures what we see in the history and but he says that for history does not tell us about the universal truth only the poetry tells us what should be uh, the universal truth what should be there and uh, philosophy tells us about the abstract concepts in philosophy uh, if you uh, go through the philosophy given by Socrates or Aristotle all these are abstract concepts and uh, uh, Philip Sidney says that uh, poetry helps first in revealing what is universal truth and second it makes us makes it easy for us to understand what is the what all these abstract concepts are means uh, if I try to simplify these things uh, Philip Sidney says that uh, poetry helps us in understanding the even the abstract concepts of the philosophy this is what he means to say and then he makes uh, several classifications or divisions in the uh, poetry uh, here uh, Philip Sidney says that uh, there is a religious poetry it is completely dedicated and related to God 
and then there is a philosophic it is related to philosophy means how to live in life how to flourish in life what is happiness sorrows everything all the issues of human life means a philosophy what to do what not to do all these things come under this category and then he makes uh, some uh, more classifications like there is a lyric poem means which have some music and rhyme and rhythm everything then he says one more is tragic poem and uh, in such a tragic poems uh, we have the fall uh, from high means uh, there is a, some incident or story in such a tragic poems and we see the fall of a hero then there is one more elegy poem elegy means mourning on someone's death means the sorrows and griefs all those that is elegy or elegic poem then one more is there that is comic poem uh, comic or comedy it is about making uh, fun of someone especially to make some satires to make some uh, if someone have any uh, you can say bad habit so you have to produce such a kind of poetry to make satire on his bad habits so that he should get rid of his bad habits to make some uh, sarcastic or some critical remarks through uh, comic poetry then we have one more classification or category that is called as the pastoral poem so pastoral is quite obvious uh, you may have heard this time word number of time it is related to the village life this is called as the pastoral uh, poem and uh, now out of all these uh, categories and uh, what philip sidney feels that uh, the best kind of poetry is epic or heroic poetry like beowulf we have like uh, paradise lost we have i am just giving this example means such epic large poems heroic poems these are inspiring poems so these are the or this is the best uh, category of all these poems so this is the best kind according to philip sidney epic or heroic poetry now he comes to stephen goson about his charges whichever he has laid against the poetry so what he says philip sidney says that poetry it is not the wastage of time rather poetry is the source of knowledge and then he says that it is it is sorry it is not the mother of lies but it tells in fact even in the poetry the poet himself says that it is some, somewhat fictional whatever the poetry we have it is all about fiction it is not real if someone is saying that it is not real how we, how can we charge him that he is uh, telling us a lie if i am telling you in the beginning that it is a it is a fictional story so i am not telling you any lie so similar thing he says that poetry is simply fictional it is not a lie any kind of lie it is not a lie and then he says that poetry never abuses people a good poetry never abuses people rather people abuse poetry now he is making a remark a severe remark against stephen goson because stephen goson is abusing poetry he is saying that poetry, poetry is not good so now philip sidney says that poetry never says poetry never says that uh, people are not good in fact people they are hating poetry so they are abusing poetry and in fact uh, one more thing he adds that poetry rather helps the people to give good message so he is just talking about the good poetry that a good poetry is always there and giving good messages to the people it is not a bad thing and uh, now he takes one more example of plato what he says that uh, according to philip sidney plato simply wanted that only the bad poets to be banished from his ideal world plato was never against poetry these are the views given by steve sorry philip sidney because earlier stephen goson said that plato was against poets or oh, sorry poetry but uh, philip sidney says that plato was never against poetry plato was only against bad poets who were corrupting the mind of the people so 
with these remarks or with these points he is justifying that poetry is a good thing and now moving from uh, stephen goson to the uh, characteristics of a good poetry what philip sidney says that uh, in good poetry we see that meter and rhyme is there but it is not essential part okay it is desirable if someone is going for rhythm rhyme and music meter everything because it gives a uh, uh, it polish the speech if someone is having rhyme and rhythm in the poetry and if someone is just reciting the poetry then it will definitely give some uh, means uh, uh, some superiority to the poems or poetry and he also says that uh, uh, these things means rhyme and me meter all these things provide harmony and order and add music emotions everything so if you can go uh, if you see any poem with a free verse means uh, that does not have any rhythm and another poem that has a rhythm music everything you will feel that there is a difference and uh, definitely the poem that have uh, means the poems which have music rhythm everything involved in it these uh, poetry or these forms of poems uh, will attract will appeal your mind more than the free verse or which does not have any uh, rhyme and music then he talks about the problems of the renaissance theater this is the last part of this uh, work uh, defense of poesy in the last section he is talking about the problems of the elizabethan or renaissance theater he says that uh, he says that in the modern theater or sorry that uh, renaissance theater he condemns that the modern tragedies or sorry modern again i'm using a wrong word word because uh, uh, that time whatever the comedies or tragedies were written these were not of a good quality according to philip sidney during the period of renaissance means in the 16th century half of the 1550 to 1600 or somewhere around whatever was written during that time either comedies or tragedies these were not so good especially before william shakespeare because he died philip sidney died in 1586 and after 1586 we see that william shakespeare started flourishing he says that these comedies are mixed tragedies are mixed with comedies so we have the uh, means a uh, combination means uh, comedy uh, in tragedy you see there are some comic parts so he says that these things are not good at all see so mixing of comedy and tragedy is not a good thing at all this is the flaw or this is the drawback of the renaissance theater and further he says that farcical comedy means uh, the comedy that does not have any particular target or any particular means uh, objective to make some sort of improvement in the society such comedy is simply farcical and this should not be uh, endorsed so one must not endorse or one must not support such comedies or farcical simply that does not have any sense at all just you see that uh, means a uh, dialogues and comic dialogues but there is no particular motive behind such comedies these uh, comedies are not worth reading writing or watching whatever you can say and further he also condemns the contemporary love plots comic love plots all these things he simply criticize and further he says that these comedies or these tragedies these are violating the principle given by aristotle that is the unity of time and place so they are simply uh, violating these uh, basic principle so that is how he is uh, uh, talking about the problems of the renaissance theater and then he uh, gives some more words uh, for, uh, spare some more words to praise english language philip sidney this is important point philip sidney in defense of poesy praises english language he says that this language is far better than latin greek or other european languages so this is much better language than the other european languages latin greek especially and other french or other you can involve in it english has qualitative quantitative manner and these are the means of words he gives or he talks about uh, the quality of english language means this is a uh, okay so with simple words i can just uh, sum up that 
English is a better language than the other languages during that time. And uh, the last point of just a fact you can write that he talks about three kind of rhymes. There are three kinds of rhyme talked by Philip Sidney. Uh, the first female, male, okay, male, female, first, whichever you can take, male, female, and the first, third one is sedukula. Oh, pretty odd word. Okay, spellings are also a bit difficult. You can note it down. Sedukula. So it is also taken as a neutral, means we have two gender, male, female, and the third one is sedukula. So all these three are the kinds of rhymes, according to Philip Sidney. So that's it all we have about Philip Sidney. So there are several questions asked in the previous year question papers in UGC net. So I would just quickly like to uh, go through these ones. So the first one we have Sidney attributed poetry with moral power. He says that the biggest attribute of poetry is the moral power, morality. Second, this, these are, this is a quotation uh, I would like to just quickly repeat. You can note it down if you wish. Uh, what he says that now, now as in geometry, the oblique oblique must be known as well as right and in arithmetic the odd as well as the even so in the action of our life who seeth not the filthiness of evil one tenth a great foil to perceive the beauty of virtue okay this is somewhat about middle in not middle english but still uh, the earlier time of the English in the 16th century. So some difficult words or uh, not easy to sum up the what is the meaning, but these words are about comedy. So you can just think about or read these lines and then you can find that what is the meaning of these words. The next question is a good example of English poetry or poesy. He talks about which are the good example he gives the first is mirror of magistrate by thomas sackville the second one is shepherd's calendar so this is quite famous work by edmund spencer so he talks about these two works as the good example of uh, english poetry mirror of magistrate by thomas sackville and shepherd's calendar by edmund spencer so edmund spencer you know that his lifespan was almost similar to what Philip Sidney had in fact somewhere before and then we have uh, one more point that he says that poetry never lies this is one more question this is the biggest attribute of the poetry that according to Philip Sidney poetry never lies then one more question in that uh, there is one more quotation so I just simply again uh, read that how all their play be neither right tragedies nor right comedies all how all their play be neither right tragedies nor right comedies mingling kings and clowns not because the matter so carrieth it but the thirst in the clown had and shoulder to play a part in the majestical matters so this is about the fact i told you earlier about the unity of action violated he says that uh, mingling of comedy and tragedy so unity of action is violated because in tragedy one plot is there one action is there in comedy one action is there so both actions are mingled according to aristotle uh, a tragedy should have one main action but he says that with mixer mix up of uh, comedy and tragedy we have mingling of uh, different actions and then one more point that is what is the best form of poetry that is heroic or epic poetry then in biblical psalms uh, he take one reference that king david wrote biblical psalms in ancient or European literature we will study 
king david wrote biblical psalms in bible we have biblical psalms means at the end there are some psalms and songs you can call them and these songs or these psalms talk about the importance of poetry because through these psalms through these psalms philip sidney says that if Bibli uh, bible has psalms means a form of poetry then uh then why we should not have poetry because if a religious work is having poetry so there should be poetry everywhere so he is supporting poetry through the this example that uh, religious work bible containing uh, poetic form uh, with the biblical psalms and the last uh, question we have that is speaking picture to teach and delight this is said by philip sidney Philip Sidney says that what is poetry or good poetry or uh, it is a speaking picture and the purpose of the poetry is to teach and delight so that's all about uh, Philip Sidney as a critic i tried uh, as i had the material uh, to some of whatever his views were in the that famous work that is uh, defense of poesy or apology for poetry for other works written by philip sidney like lady of may astrophel stella and the famous work so you uh, we shall uh, discuss all these things in the british literature section and uh, that's it for this lesson thanks for watching this lesson have a nice day